All right, so welcome back. You can see here I've got myself a new toy. Well, a new to me toy. I bought this uh, OTMT Super X3 Mini Mill. This uh, this same exact Mini Mill goes by the name of Sieg uh, Super X3 or Grizzly 0619 among other names. Before I power this thing up for the first time, I'm going to strip it down to bare bones and I'm going to convert it to a CNC machine. So first things first with the SX3 Mini Mill. The spindle motor, well this, this machine caps out at 1800 RPM which is like absolutely nothing in uh, modern day manufacturing. But the motor has the same form factor as a NEMA 34 motor what does that get me you might be asking well that gets me the ability to swap this dumb motor for an AC servo so my plan is to get rid of this motor in exchange for a DMM technology NEMA 34 1000 watt AC servo motor what that'll do is it'll give me functionality of the encoder feedback and it'll allow me to rigid tap with this machine without having to put on secondary encoders and, and things like that. So that's my thought on that. And, and the, the rated speed on the DMM motor is 30, no, 3,000 RPM with a maximum speed of 5,000. The machine itself like I said, it caps out at 1800 RPM, but the spindle bearings on these are known to withstand speeds up to about 4,000 4, or so. So my plan is to, is to either figure out a way to have a high-low gear or just gear this down, which will lose a little bit of torque but it'll bump up the speed I'll only get half the torque if I do a one-to-one -one. get um, but but it'll allow me to it'll allow me to crank the rpm of the machine up a little bit more while also again having the encoder feedback so that's my first that's my first uh, project so to speak is to is to make that work all right, so I got this thing up on the bench. Started pulling the, uh, I got the table off when I brought it in. Long story behind that one. Trying to get this thing in. The, uh, I was trying to use the engine hoist to get it down the stairway and the piston decided that it was going to blow out on me, which led me to pulling the table off on the top step of my basement stairwell and subsequently basically just sliding the thing down on the back sheet metal which resulted in a couple of a couple of scratches it wasn't intended that way it just kind of you know 400 pound uh, brick kind of had a mind of its own but anyway so I started taking the rest of this thing apart to find out that the the BLDC motor has a direct swap DMM AC servo motor that will fit pretty much right in its place. Aside from, we'll see when I get it, but I think I might have to modify that breather cover underneath, which shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'll come up with some kind of some kind of uh, solution for that. <clears throat> so. Originally, I was going to linear guide this thing right out of the gate. I think I'm going to decide against that for the time being, only because I well, mostly because I don't like I don't like calling in too many favors, and and, and the guy that's offering to uh, do some of the machine work for me, it just it, it rubs me the wrong way that I have to. Ask people, ask people nicely for uh, for anything. So, I'm going to 
stick with the original dovetail ways for right now. I'm going to order the, well it used to be CNC Fusion, now it's Heavy Metal CNC Kit to CNC this thing for the time being. But then I've got, I've got DMM servos on their way. NEMA 23 for X and Y, NEMA 34 for Z, and then again the uh, the spindle motor is actually going to be a 1000 watt NEMA 34 spindle motor. It's got the same 14 millimeter shaft that the original has and the adapter plate should fit. I say should fit because I took some quick measurements and compared it to the drawing that DMM sent me and it looks like it'll be a drop-in replacement. It, it's maybe 18 to 20 millimeters too long. So like I said, I gotta see what the, what the cabling and whatnot, because on the BLDC there's cables that come down, whereas on the, on the drawing that was sent to me for the servo motor, the, the cabling goes in a different direction. So depending on how that all points, will be, uh, We'll denote whether this thing drops in or not. But I'll know in a couple of days when that comes in. So, for anybody who has not done this before and is is trying to do the SX3 or X3, um, this, this Y-axis nut here, it screws in from the bottom. And then once you, once you detach that front plate, from here, take the two screws out from the bottom. You gotta just kind of, kind of jimmy it a little bit, and it does come up and off. So, just keep that in mind that it is pinned. So, getting it off isn't isn't as easy as uh, as one would think. The x-axis. Once you take this the the left side plate off, or the power feed in my case, you take that side off, and then over here. You just crank the screw once you detach it from the table. Crank the screw and it just comes right out and then the table slides off. No big deal. You just got to watch out because the gibbs will fall out and they will bind up if you don't loosen the four screws and then make sure that the, the lock is off as well. Alright, so I just got done pulling the spindle motor out of the machine along with the front mounted scale. The control panel with the little e-stop button. I'm actually going to consider reusing that e-stop button, but what I'm going to do is once I get the machine back up and going, I'll make a I'll make a dummy plate that replaces this one because now there's going to be some big gaping holes in the uh, in the front there. So I'll make a little plate that goes over top. Might be the first project. But the wiring's all out of the side. Disconnected the drive boards for the spindle. That's all out. Because again, I will be using a spindle or a servo spindle. That should give me the ability to rigid tap as long as I can get the tuning set properly in Linux CNC. So we're uh, we're moving along. I mean, there's, there's the uh, quintessential Ocean of Chaos photo or shot, whatever. So next up is, what is next? Yeah, next up is we wait for motors and we have to get, uh, I have to get the conversion kit to bolt on. Still trying to weigh between the standard kit and spending the extra couple of bucks to get the extra long kit. But the problem with that is that I have to spend 250 bucks to buy an extra long table. It comes with a lead screw and everything. I don't need the lead screw, and they won't sell me the they won't sell me the table separately. So it's 250 bucks. Figure the the screw itself is probably fifty dollars. Whatever, that's two hundred dollars plus another fifty bucks for the uh, the extra long ball screw for the kit. I might be better off just buying the screw separately and use it the way it is, and 
get a new screw when I decide on the new table. If I need the new table, time will tell. So Santa Claus just visited my house and I now have my servos. Here's the one kilowatt spindle motor that I bought. As you can see, it's a direct replacement for the BLDC motor. The cabling is a little bit of a little bit of a question. This one in particular, it doesn't fit through these holes. So what I might have to do is figure out a way to detach the Molex connector from the uh, spindle cable that they sent or the, the servo cable that they sent to feed it through the channel, get it into the hole connected to the receiving end of the Molex connector here and then just tuck the wiring away inside of the casting. I don't plan on using the quill, but I want to make sure that the connectors and stuff don't interfere with the quill operation just in case. I don't want anything to get chewed up or caught or snagged or anything like that. But as you can see, um, aside from having to change out the screw on the top because the shaft thread on the DMM servo is M4 and the BLDC was M5, it's it, it bolts up perfectly it fits in no sweat there's actually still about a half inch of room between the bottom of the cover and the bottom of the motor so so far we're working uh, we're, we're, we're getting along pretty well so we got a delivery from servo claws today <laughs> So I got, oh, I got a line reactor, breakers, contactors, 24 volt power, uh, power supply. Because unlike what they tell you with this, you still need a separate power supply for the DYN4s because I'm powering the 7i76E Mesa board with it. And I've got EMI filters. Some DIN rail. I bought, uh, they have, they had a deal you buy three foot lengths and it's fairly cheap. It's like five bucks a piece. And I'll just cut that to what I need with the hacksaw. Got, uh, got to order a couple more things. I got to get some terminal blocks and other, uh, ways to distribute everything. But we're getting there. We'll be, uh, hooking these things up pretty soon for bench testing at least. All right, so now I got the table and cross slide off. I took all the lead screws out of the machine. The, uh, the, the screws for for the Y-axis are underneath the casting. You gotta kind of tilt the machine up in order to get to them. These ones here are just mounted directly to, uh, to the cross slide for the table. The Z-axis, what I did here was I blocked it up, tightened the gib. Took the screw out, you take the bottom, you take the bottom bearing carrier out. It's just two six millimeter bolts, hex uh, or cap screws, take those out. And then you wiggle, you just wiggle it and it pops right off. It's, it's not really that difficult. If you have uh, trouble with it, you can put, um, you can, the, the dowels that hold it in place are threaded. So you could put screws in there to yank those out. I got to get this hand wheel shaft out of here and then I can put in the ball screw. I got the kit from Heavy Metal CNC which used to well it, it's a carryover from the CNC fusion kit. There um I, I did have a couple of gripes and issues with the ball screws that I ordered but it all looks like it's here. It said on their website I got I was gonna get Thompson bearings, but they uh, they changed suppliers and now they're just using the uh, they're using a uh, Zytec uh, or something like that, or Ziltec, which is a Chinese outfit. So regardless of what they say on their website, they say that you're getting a uh, C six precision uh, ball screw, but I, I don't know. I, I still got. I got what I what I find to be C7 grade 
ball nuts on what might be a more accurate ball screw, but I guess time will tell. Otherwise, it doesn't look like a bad kit, but the x-axis ball nut is proud of the bearing block, which interferes with where it mounts between the cross slide and the table. Cross slide and table from here to here is about one inch 450 and the bearing nut is one inch 575. So I emailed the guy from Heavy Metal CNC and he said he was going to take care of that for me. But I have to send him back the screw because the x-axis screw, actually the ball nut, um, when you change the direction, it, it binds up for a couple of turns before it frees back up. So there's an issue with the ball nut that was supplied. I don't know if there's any if there's something in it or what, but it's just not working properly. So he and I had a little, uh, had some words back and forth. But we're moving along. I should have the ball screw in shortly. All right, that went fairly painless. Ball screw's on. I gotta get the hand wheel shaft out of the front, but it's in place. There's a, uh, so with the new ball nuts that this guy gives you, you get a, uh, you get an adapter plate that bolts onto the bottom of the old bearing carrier or screw or nut carrier rather. Um, the whole pattern's off by just enough that the screws are a little tight, so you want to get them started before you get all four of them started before you run this thing in, because the or you'll have to uh, open the holes up just a little bit. But aside from that, that went pretty uh, pretty well. I got the x-axis bearing carrier in place. I got the y-axis assembly in place. I have to get to the bearing carrier for that one again i have to lift the machine up for that so what i all i do is i just put a block of wood in front of it lift it up with the cherry picker block of wood in the front lower it down onto the block of wood and then it kind of teeters back a little bit so i can reach what i need we're getting there these uh these these chinese machines they they hand fit all of the controls and everything and then they pin them in place so the whole patterns are never lined up properly from what I understand. So this thing sits a little cattywampus, but it's not going to affect the overall performance of the machine. I got, I started putting the plates onto the table. I've got the Z-axis motor plate and bracket assembly, but the guy didn't give me the freaking bolts that he was supposed to supply. So... I'm kind of at a standstill at this point. So I just picked up this nice cabinet. It's um, 24 by 30 by 13. For you metric guys, that's uh, it's big. It's gonna probably reside behind the cabinet. The front of the cabinet is here. I gotta clean up everything, it's so hard to work around here. So here's the front of the cabinet. The machine will sit up on top of here, and then the electrical enclosure will be behind it. I will seal off the holes that are there somehow. And then the inside's got a big old steel sub panel and a couple in you know, it. It's used, I got it. 40 bucks so I can't complain sub panels got a couple of holes a little bit of rust on it no big deal that'll all get covered up and hidden and nobody will be the wiser and it also came with this enclosure which I don't really have much of a use for but I'm sure somebody will so I'm gonna have to uh, pop this up on old flea bay and see what I can get for it hell if I can recoup half my money for this I'll be in good shape 